Here's another example from the SSAT, a real SSAT. And I forget what percentage of the students missed this one. But quite a few. It's, it's like 50%. So we have a, uh, some kind of bar here of mass M. And it rests against a wall. If the bar is not moving, so there's no rotation, no translation up and down the wall, what is our F pull that we provide? Why don't you pause it and try to solve it yourself? And then come back and see what I do. So pause the video and then watch the solution and see if you can get it right. Did you try it? No, honestly, did you? Did you give it a shot? Some of you did. Some of you said, I wanna see the answer. I wanna see the answer now. I had a student who, <laughs> he took a test and uh, he called me up and he said, I just took my physics test. I said, oh, how'd it go? And he said, well, I went to the vending machine and I bought a bag of M&Ms. And I, I opened the bag of M&Ms and I said, if I pull out a green M&M, I did really well on the test. He goes, you know what? I pulled out a green M&M. Do you think I did well? I said, of course you did well. It is a well-known physical law called the green M&M theorem. It says that, and it was actually Newton who thought of this. Newton actually invented not only fig Newtons, the cookie, but when he was tired of that, he said, I think I'm gonna go in the candy business. I'm gonna beat Mars to the punch. I don't even know that it'll be called Mars, but I'm gonna beat them to the punch and I'm gonna make M&M candies with peanuts and without. And he said, green M&Ms are magical. If you pull a green M&M out at any time, it means that you did really well on something. Sure, makes sense, doesn't it? If I pull out a green M&M from a bag, I did really well on a test. Holy mackerel. Thinking to myself, are you serious? You know what the terrible thing is? The kid did get an A. <laughs> I'll bet you to this day, he like still goes to vending machines and after he makes like a big decision on Wall Street, he says, that stock is going up if I pull out a green M&M. It's green! Buy more! <laughs> anyway, here's the solution to this. There's a force not shown. It's in the middle of the bar and it acts downward and it's mg. But we all know that the torques have to be in balance. The sum of the torques have to be balanced and the sum of the forces have to be balanced and they have to add up to zero. Trouble is, I don't know what's going on at this support in terms of whether or not there's a force. So I am uh, stuck having to look at the sum of the torques being zero to decide. So... This is theta, I'll draw this force here from this one, and this force here from this one. So this is 90, this is theta, 90 minus theta, this must be theta. And uh, let's see, uh, this is theta, 90 minus theta, theta, and theta. Okay, so if you know your similar triangles, you can like dance through where theta is pretty rapidly. I'm not spending a lot of time on it because it's trigonometry. But uh, when, you have, when you have similar triangles, you know where that the angles of the three triangles are equal. Lengths may not be the same, but they're in the same ratio, right? So here I have my torque, and my torque caused by this is I have a force in this direction, and it's being rotated clockwise into the moment arm. Uh, the length of the... Uh, 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 I didn't tell you what the length was, so I hope you gave it a variable, L. So mg cosine theta times the moment arm is the torque in this direction, into the page. Out of the page is the torque that is f pull times the cosine of theta again times the moment arm, which is now L. It's acting at the full length. So these torques have to be equal because it is in equilibrium. Can't do the forces. Why? Because I don't know what's happening at the wall. So you would, you would get nowhere with the sum of the forces being, being zero. So 
since these have to be equal, um, and we know that the cosines cancel, and that the L's cancel, and F pull has to equal mg over two. Half of the weight of the bar will balance this. Is it a function of theta? No, it doesn't matter what the angle of the bar is, you'll always be supporting it at the end with half of its weight. Because the weight's in the middle, that's kind of why. So there you have what looked like a you know, pretty hard problem. Eh, you need a little trigonometry to solve it, but it wasn't that hard to come out the other end. We can now figure out whether or not there are forces at the wall. By the way, you would never do this on a test because they didn't ask about it. But the sum of the forces has to be the same. So that means that the downward force, mg, minus f pull, which is upward, plus force at the wall has to be zero. So the force at the wall has to be equal to f pull minus mg. F pull minus mg. So F pull, which is mg, F wall equals um, positive F pull, which is mg over 2, minus mg, which equals negative 1 half mg. There must be a negative force acting, and uh, for us, negative is up. So there must be a force acting in this direction that's half of the weight. But nobody asks, so don't waste your time on the test doing things they don't want. Always read the problem carefully and answer only the question they ask. Don't be sidetracked because you're interested in something. Nobody gives a flying rat's fart in a hailstorm that something in the problem interests you that was not requested. Don't get sucked up in that. It's not the green M&M. You're not going to be rewarded for things that are not asked for on the test. There's no box to check off. It says, by the way, I overanalyzed all the problems. Can I get extra credit? Mm.